Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is an, from the application of Laplace transform. And in this, uh, we'll be solving example and practice problem 16.5. And this is on the request of a student. So let's see what is example 16.5. It says for the circuit shown in figure 16.12, which is the circuit and the initial conditions used in example 16.4 so these are the initial conditions use superposition theorem to find the value of the capacitor voltage so we want to find the voltage across this capacitor now the, the first thing is that uh, we convert the circuit in S domain Laplace domain and I hope you know uh, how to convert this. If you have forgotten, I will rec recommend that you read article 16.2. Now, the circuit has three independent sources, uh, one source, second source and third source. We can look at the solution one source at a time. So that is what the superposition theorem says that you got to consider one source at a time. Okay, so first let's solve for the capacitor voltage in the circuit 1613A. So this is the 1613A circuit. In that we are keeping only the left source and the other two sources are made zero. So I hope you remember that the current source is made zero by making it open circuit and the voltage source is made zero by making it short circuit. So this is the circuit. And this voltage, we are saying it is V1 for uh, the first source or the leftmost source. So we'll calculate V1, which is also the voltage across this capacitor. So if we uh, mark three uh, current directions uh, on our own, then we can say that by KCL at node number one, all three are leaving. So I1 plus I2 plus I3 is equal to zero. And now if you write it in terms of the sources, so the first one is V1 minus 0 divided by 10 over 3. So V1 minus 0 we don't write divided by 10 over 3. What about this, this source? Now I have explained it in my nodal analysis lecture that if the other source has a current direction from here you can see the current is going up. If this current direction is opposite of the main current direction, then we put a minus sign with this. And that is why we are now putting minus 10 over S. So V1 minus 10 over S, V1 minus 10 over S divided by this resistance. So that is I1. Then we come to I2. So it is V1 divided by 5S. So V1 minus 0 divided by 5S or you may not write minus 0 if you want. And third one is this one. So V1 minus 0, we are taking ground as 0. V1 minus 0 divided by this impedance 10S is equal to 0. Okay, so we were here. We had got this uh, equation. And now we'll simplify. I have given all the steps here. You can just follow one by one, this, then from here, this one. We have taken this one on the right hand side. We come here, taking common V1 and then also manipulating. And finally, we multiply both sides by 10, so it becomes simpler. And from here, we can take common this term, this S goes on the right hand side, S and S gets cancelled and from here we can find V1 to be 30 over S square plus 3S plus 2. And this can be written as in factorized form S plus 1 over S plus 2. Going further, Take help of partial fraction, so we take two unknowns, A and B, for these two um, factors. 
and now we'll use residue method if you have forgotten i'll recommend that you search the book residue method and it is very easily explained anyway the technique is that for the first variable we write it here and multiply by the denominator the v1 so s plus 1 into v1 and the condition is this is equal to 0 that means s is equal to minus 1 and now v1 is actually this term here so this multiply by s1 so s1 s1 gets cancelled so 30 divided by s plus 2 condition is s is equal to minus 1 and putting in the values we get a is equal to 30 and similarly for b we get minus 30 and so now we can say that v1 is uh, as shown here now this is we are in s domain remember now we can use the laplace transform we can go into the time domain from here so we can say v1 t is 30 and for this we like e raised to the power minus t using this laplace transform formula and similarly for here it will be minus 30 e raised to the power minus 2t so this is for the first voltage and so we just take common ut so this is the final answer this is v1t for the first source or the leftmost source and now we'll go for the second source this is the circuit we'll use this source and these two will make zero <coughs> so from here you can see we have both the voltage source we have shorted so, the, so this is the uh, now second source circuit and we'll write again here the um, kcl equation or the current equation at the node so first one is v1 or sorry v2 minus 0 divided by this so v2 minus 0 divided by 10 over 3 similarly v2 divided by 5s or v2 minus 0 divided by 5s and then there is another current source so we have to take this into account and the condition says it is minus 1 minus 1 flows through the inductor that means uh, i 0 is minus 1 so plus minus 1 over s and then this one third one v2 over 10s minus 0 you want to write or not doesn't matter okay now step by step we are simplifying here multiplying both sides by 10 then taking common v2 solving and this equation okay so we were here and now take this term on the right hand side and with the help of okay factorize these two and now we'll use partial partial fraction so a divided by one term and b divided by the second factor and exactly same way we, as we did previously by residue method i hope you can pause the video and follow step by step so a is 10 and b is minus 10 so this becomes v2 and now we'll take the inverse of the laplace transform so we get this answer for v2 okay now we come to the third source we'll be using this one here so we keep that source and the other two are zero this is open and this one is shorted so this becomes the third circuit and as we did before we'll write the uh current equations at the this node so the first one v0 over this uh, impedance similarly all three i hope you can follow this here also v3 minus this one because this direction of di direction of current is opposite of from v3 so we'll put a minus sign here so v3 minus 5s and why minus 5s because it is v0 s and v0 the voltage is plus 5 across the capacitor so that is why we'll put plus 
and this minus sign is because of the direction opposite. And again, uh, by solving step by step, multiplying both sides by 10, simplifying, simplifying. So from here, we take the partial fractions. And by residue method, again, we get the value of A and B. So V3 is as shown here, minus 5 divided by S plus 1 plus 10 divided by S plus 2. Now we can take the inverse Laplace. So taking inverse Laplace, we find this value. So we have got all the three voltages uh, in time domain. So we can add all three to find the total voltage. Uh, that is what his superposition theorem says. So we are adding all the three voltages. This is our final answer. And this is the voltage that is across the capacitor. This voltage is across the capacitor. So that is our answer. Now let's come to the practice problem. Very quickly I will go over it. It is using the same circuit, that is figure 1612, and the same initial conditions. Here we have to find out the current through the inductor. In the previous case, we found the voltage across the capacitor, this one. And now we have to find the current through the inductor. That is the only difference by superposition theorem. And the initial conditions remain the same. I will take help of the uh, previous um, question. And as you know, we had these three uh, sources, one at a time we had used the first one and the middle one and the right one. And for uh, this we had found out, for the first one we had found out this voltage. So you can refer back to the previous slides. This was the voltage and from here we can find the current I1. So this is the current I1 which will be V1 divided by 5S. So 1 over 5S V1. So this is I1. Similarly, V2 for the circuit, this was the equation for voltage. And now current here is slightly tricky, you have to keep in mind, the, in this case the net current through the inductor will be that due to V2, so this current from here, and also due to this current. So we'll add this I0 over S, this current will be added. Uh, uh, to get the total current through this. And so, V2 will be this and plus minus 1 over 5. Why minus? Because I0 was told that it is minus 1. The initial current flowing through the inductor is minus 1. And when we write minus 1 in Laplace form, it will be minus 1 over S. So this is very important, this is the only trick that you have to keep in mind. And now we come to the third part, V3, we had this voltage for this one and from here also we can find I3 to be, uh, you see V3 if you found, then divided by 5S, so this is I3. So we have found all three currents. And now the total current will be by adding all three. So we added the first one. The second one, remember 1 over minus S is not covered by 1 over 5S. So this is separate. And then the third one. And solving step by step, I hope you can again pause the video and go through each step. And you can surely find out it's not difficult. So this is the uh, uh, final answer for I. So let's just write it again. Okay. So this is the answer. By partial fraction, we write like this. The residue method again, you, I hope you can follow these steps. So we get 3 minus 7 and 3. So this is our current in Laplace form. And now we'll go into the uh, time domain by taking inverse of Laplace. 
So this is the answer. And we can write it neatly, taking comma, ut. So this is what is the answer. This is what is given in the book. So I hope this gives you an understanding as to how you can solve this type of a difficult problem if you follow steps and uh, do a little bit of a practice. Thank you.